You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Dare to Soar with your host, Dr. R.C. Dr. R.C. will empower, encourage, and strengthen you. She will help you to soar to your highest potential while instilling hope. Please welcome the host of Dare to Soar, Dr. R.C. According to Caitlin Newman with the USnews.com, As the number of vaping-related illnesses and deaths in the U.S. continues to rise, government officials at the federal, state, and local levels have focused on curbing and, in some cases, banning the sale of e-cigarette and vaping products, especially those appealing to minors. As of late September, there had been 805 confirmed and probable cases of severe lung disease and 12 deaths linked to vaping in the U.S. with some of the patients in their teens. The reaction has been swift. The Trump administration singled and forthcoming banned on all non-tobacco flavor e-cigarette products, while governors in New York, Massachusetts, Michigan, Rhode Island, and Washington have moved to sharply restrict or even eliminate the sales of e-cigarette products. California is cracking down on illicit and bootleg e-cigarettes, and retail giant Walmart announced it would stop selling the devices in its stores. Internationally, India banned the sale of all e-cigarettes, silently newly found health risks. Even the Disease of Center Control, CDC, and Prevention has warned consumers to stop vaping. Additionally, Dr. Dana Meany Delman, who is managing the CDC's response to the outbreak, has said, while speaking with reporters and other federal officials, while the investigation is ongoing, The CDC has advised that individuals consider not using e-cigarettes because as of now, this is the primary means of preventing this severe lung disease. E-cigarettes and vape pens go by many names, including e-cigs, e-hookahs, modes, vapes, tank systems, and electronic nicotine delivery systems, or ENDs. They come in many shapes and sizes, but all have three main components, a heating element, a liquid that typically contains flavoring and nicotine, and a mouthpiece. Good morning, Dare to Soar listeners. This is Dr. R.C., and I am your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This morning, we are going to have a candid conversation while I share vital information about the flavored epidemic of e-cigarettes and vaping, along with the profound profound impact that it's having on our youth across this nation. Now, I'd like to go back just a moment on the information that I have shared with you to give you some definitions of some of the terms, two in particular, that I've shared with you. One first being about the MODS, M-O-D-S. And what I want to share with you is it looks like a big, thick pen. And these are terms that certainly you want to be familiar with. Because as I shared in the topic in itself, it certainly is an epidemic. And essentially, when we speak about the MODS, 
M-O-D-S. It's a vape pen on steroids. Additionally, are simply modified e-cigarette. They mostly commonly look like a big, thick pen. Also, and usual users modify this for a bigger battery or a larger tank to create more vapor. Mods are seen as more advanced in the vaping scene. As I always share, this is a time when you certainly want to get that notebook out because the information that is going to be shared this morning is critical. It's vital to the well-being of not only our youth across this nation, but adults as well. But I just want to focus in on our youth because there is so much information when it comes to e-cigarettes and vaping that we certainly, certainly need for it to be shared. So as I move on, the next bit of information I'd like to share with you is concerning another term that I utilize was ENDS. Electronic Nicotine Delivery System. Now, when we speak about that, it's a non-combustible tobacco product. These products use as an e-liquid that may contain nicotine as well as varying compositions of flavoring, vegetable glycerin, and other ingredients. The liquid is heated to create an aerosol that the user inhales. And let me repeat that piece again. The liquid is heated to create an aerosol that the user inhales. Now, let's think about that for a moment. When we think about an aerosol, we're thinking about a cleaning supply or an air freshener, if you will. So when we're thinking about our young people inhaling something of that nature, that is cause for a pause and definitely something that we really want to dig a bit deeper into and certainly need to gain more information about. Because if that's something that they're putting inside of their bodies, then that's information that they need to have shared with them on a totally and absolutely different level. As I stated, listeners, this morning, I'm having a candid conversation while sharing vital information about the flavored epidemic of e-cigarettes and vaping, along with the profound impact that it is having on our youth across this nation. Now, as I continue on, let's get into what is vaping. And I'm sure that we hear this term along with e-cigarettes that is interchangeable, but I'd like to provide information about that. According to Center on Addiction, vaping is the act of inhaling and exhaling once again, the aerosol, often referred to as vapor which is produced by an e-cigarette or similar device. And let me repeat that once again. Vaping is the act of inhaling and exhaling the aerosol, often referred to as a vapor, which is produced by an e-cigarette or similar device. The term is used because e-cigarettes do not produce tobacco smoke, but rather an aerosol, often mistaken for water vapor, that usually consists of fine particles. Many of these particles contain varying amounts of toxic chemicals, which have been linked to cancer, as well as respiratory and heart disease. Vaping has grown so much in popularity with the rise of e-cigarettes, which were introduced to the mass market across the U.S. in 2007. Listeners, I'm going to let that sink in for a moment. 
Don't go away. It is time for a commercial break. We will be right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success, as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers, as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at Soar with katie.com attorney renee marie smith is changing the way we sell real estate she wrote a series of books called my short sale guru guides for all real estate practitioners whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process an agent who has been handling short sales for years or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy to understand format through her company smith title services Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru Way. Welcome back, listeners. I am Dr. R.C., your host. This is Dare to Soar, live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Once again, I want to provide you our topic of discussion this morning. I'm having a candid conversation while sharing vital information about the flavored epidemic of e-cigarettes and vaping, along with the profound effect that it is having on our youth across this nation. And just let me be clear why I'm using while I'm using flavored epidemic. Because it certainly does come in several different flavors, which I'm going to provide you with a bit of that information as we go on this morning. I want to continue on by sharing what is vaping and pick back up with that. Vaping devices include not just e-cigarettes, but also vape pens and advanced personal vaporizers, also known as the modes M-O-D-S, which I shared with you a little bit before we went to commercial break. E-cigarettes, which reassemble smoke cigarettes and vape pens, large fountain pens, typically similar in design, similar in design and less expensive than devices that have been customized by users. And notice that I said customized. So that means that individuals can design them in a way that they choose to as well. And I hope that you all have your notebooks and taking down your notes, just jotting things down because this is information that you yourself can go back and research as well. Generally, a vaping device consists of a mouthpiece, a battery, a cartridge for containing the liquid or e-juice and a heating component for the device that is powered by a battery. Now, when the device is used, the battery heats up the component, which turns the contents, the contents of this into a liquid. And once again, here we go, and I'm going to keep repeating this because I want you to clearly understand an aerosol that is inhaled into the lungs and then exhaled. But keep in mind that once we put something inside, although something is still being a portion of it is being released, 
All of it is not being released. Therefore, we know that a great part of it, and if you're looking at percentage wise, still remains within the body. And we're speaking of individuals that are not fully developed just yet. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I'm going to give you some information about that part of it as well. The e-liquid is in vaporizer. It's in a vaporizer that produces usually and contains or additionally a vegetable glycerin based liquid with nicotine flavoring and other chemicals and metals, but not tobacco. Here's something noteworthy. Some people use these devices to vape TCH, the chemical responsible for most marijuana's mind altering effects and even synthetic drugs instead of nicotine. So as I shared in the beginning, this is certainly notebook time. Listeners, the newest and most popular vaping product is the Juul, which is a small, sleek device that resembles a computer USB flash drive. Now, let me just take a second here, because when we think about a computer flash drive, that means that a number of our students, young people, young stakeholders, depends on how you want to interchange that terminology, can hold this in their hands while they are attending classes. And if someone is not paying close attention to what's going on, they could possibly be vaping while in class until you see the smoke that comes behind it. And that's just how serious this is. And that's why it was so vitally important for me to share this information. The more and more I kept seeing this and taking note of this, along with the fact of working inside the school system each and every day as well, it was critical that this information be shared. But I wanted to ensure that I gathered even more information. So when this information was delivered to you, that I was providing as much knowledge to you as possible so that you yourself could go back and look up this information at your leisure. It is so designed sleekly and subtly and makes it very easy to hide, which helps explain why it has become so popular among middle and high school students. Let me say that again also. It is so subtly and sleekly designed, which helps to explain why it becomes so popular among middle and high school students. It now accounts for about 72% of the market share of vaping products in the United States. It comes in several enticing flavors. Isn't it interesting how when things are written up in the news or in research, the wording that is utilized, because this is what attracts our youth of today. Enticing flavors like creme brulee, mango, and fruit medley. The product contains a high dose of nicotine with one pot or flavor cartridge containing about the same amount of nicotine as one whole pack of cigarettes. A growing body of evidence indicates that vaping products may be dangerous. Despite early optimism, when these products first came on the market in the late 2000s, Health advocates now recommend caution in using them in light of growing evidence suggest that their risks, especially to young people, outweigh their benefits. As I stated, it is time for the notebooks. Once again, this conversation is candid and I'm sharing vital information about the flavored epidemic of e-cigarettes and vaping. 
Listeners, I'm going to hold right here. It is time for another commercial break. Don't go away. I have so much more to share. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale. An international initiative called Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing. Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Welcome back once again, listeners. I am Dr. R.C., your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When I left right before the commercial break, I was just wrapping up by sharing information about e-cigarettes and vaping. Just things such as the flavors, for example, and how it is concealed and packaged at this time as well along with the newest and most popular way that it is concealed, such as something as small as a USB drive and the way the sleek device that it is packaged in. I want to continue on, but let me give you that call-in number, which is 1-866-451-1451. As we continue on with this candid conversation about e-cigarettes and vaping. Now, as we move forward, I know that many are probably saying, even though you've heard the terms and have some idea and some may not, but that's what this show is all about. It's about sharing information and knowledge about what's going on of our youth, with our youth of today along with additional information that's being provided as support systems and how we can assist them as they become healthy and uh, full individuals as they grow into into the adults that they need to be moving forward in life. So the next step would be, what is in vaping liquid? I'm so glad you asked that. Let's talk about it. The ingredients in vaping liquid also call e-juice or vape juice or even e-liquid. It varies depending on the brand, but the most common, it contains 90% of that vegetable glycerin, which helps distribute the flavor of the nicotine if included throughout the liquid. The other 10% consists of flavoring, water, and depending on the product, nicotine, THC, or CBD oil. Now, most e-cigarettes contain nicotine, even some products that advertise otherwise. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports that the CDC has also identified harmful substances in some vaping liquids. Ultrafine particles that can be inhaled deep into the lungs. 
And remember, just a few moments ago, I shared that about the inhaling and the exhaling. And although we do realize when we hear that a portion is exhaled, but a great part of it still remains in the body. And here it is. And this is information that's provided by the CDC. Additionally, a chemical linked to a serious lung disease, also volatile organ compounds, cancer-causing chemicals, heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead, products purchased on the street and from other unauthorized vendors may even be more risky. Anyone who uses e-cigarettes products should not buy these products off the street. Anyone who uses e-cigarettes should not buy these products off the street. Once again, e-cigarette products with THC, other cannabis oils, and should not modify e-cigarettes products or add any substances to these products that are not intended by the manufacturer, officials said in a joint statement at the time. Once again, this is information coming from the CDC. Now, some may even want to know, because we're talking about e-cigarettes and vaping, and then when we look at cigarettes, some may ask the question, what is the comparison? Does it have the same effect as the other does? Well, let's get into that a little bit. Is secondhand smoke or vaping or the vapor from e-cigarettes harmful? Even if you're not using the product yourself, inhaling the vapor exhale by others who are using e-cigarettes can be dangerous to your health. Now, when we look at research, as I looked at it as well, It is limited because there are still a lot of questions about it. Now, some show secondhand smoke exposure from vaping could cause asthmatic and other respiratory reactions, as well as eye and throat irritation, possibly hazardous chemicals released by e-cigarettes such as nicotine, heavy metals, volatile organic compounds, cancer-causing chemicals, and ultrafine particles can end up deep in the lungs. Now, the majority of these studies have concluded that passive exposure may pose a health risk to bystanders. Let me say that piece again. May pose a risk to bystanders, particularly vulnerable populations such as children and teens. Mr. Andy Tan, an investigator at the Center for Disease Control, who's also a researcher, shared this information. And once again, each time I'm sharing information with you, it is coming from something that I have researched myself because anytime I'm providing knowledge with any of you that are tuned in. I definitely want you to be able to go back and look information up for yourselves. And that's why I'm always encouraging you to take out your notebooks. I would want to give the same information that I would want someone to share with me about my own children. And it's very, very important, just as the work that I do each and every day. Because it is concerning. It is important. We have to work together for the betterment of our future, which are our youth, our children, our students. Because these are the individuals who are going to be leading this world, this nation, this country. Now moving on. But I'm going to hold before I move on. It is time for a commercial break. But when we return... 
I'm going to be talking about is vaping addictive. Don't go away, listeners. I will be right back. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back once again, listeners. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Dr. R.C., your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar. Once again, we are having a candid conversation while I am sharing vital information about the flavored epidemic of e-cigarettes and vaping, along with the profound impact that it is having on our youth across this nation. Right before the break, I left you with, is vaping addictive? Let me go into that. While, While not all vaping products contain nicotine, Those that do expose users to a highly addictive and toxic chemical, nicotine can raise an individual's blood pressure and heighten his or her heart rate, along with having the risk of having a heart attack. Nicotine can raise an individual's blood pressure heighten his or her heart rate and risk of having a heart attack. Some cartridges marked extra strength or used with jewels. And remember, that is the new system, the USB, that's shaped like the USB that can be cradled in the hand, exposes users to a much as much nicotine as an entire pack of 20 tobacco cigarettes, increasing the voltage of the e-cigarettes battery could also result in a stronger hit of the liquid. Now, when you hear all of this information and the original question is, is vaping addictive? So I'm pausing in between this because, listeners, I just want you to take that in while I'm pausing in between all of this, just to meditate. And as I like to say, because I'm a country girl from Savannah, Georgia, originally marinate on that for a moment. Is it addictive? Now, when we think about vaping e-cigarettes and then when we think about traditional and I will use traditional cigarettes, If this new, and I'll say new, because it is something that has come almost like a storm or a wave, if you will, across the country, and it's 
like it has just taken over, especially with our youth, simply because we've introduce, and I'm saying we, but not particularly individual, but the way that it's been packaged, the flavoring of it, the style of it, it's been provided in that way. And although the intention may have not been to directly give it to them, but somehow, some way, in some form, it has captured their attention. So now that it has, and now that they have indulged or become intrigued by it, when you think about them and inhaling this, and it equals up to an entire pack of 20 tobacco cigarettes, and then when you go back to the question of, is vaping addictive? I would have to say yes. Once you get that and consistently move through that, and that is entering your body on a consistent basis, I'm sure that a craving will continue. And that craving will turn into more and more and more. But I don't want to give away too much. We have a little bit more and I want to continue to go on. But as I go on, I want to share some vaping rates with the, about the highest 10 states across the U.S. In 2017, a medium of 46% of the U.S. adults were considered current users of e-cigarettes or similar devices compared within 10.8 of those ages were 18 to 24 on an average of 13.2% of high school students. And yes, I did start out with adults, but I wanted to get down to the ground root of it. As I shared at the end about the 13.2% of our high school students. And here it is, here comes our adult, our adolescent information, excuse me, our adolescent information. Now, when we think about 10 states where the highest numbers are, we have two states that are tied. Ohio and Colorado. In part response to raising the rates of youth e-cigarette use, the Ohio Department of Health announced it would allocate four million for initiatives to curb vaping. Four million dollars that they are willing to dedicate for initiatives for vaping. And then in Chicago, they are willing to dedicate funds also. Among the 37 states in 2017, Colorado's high school vaping rate was the highest in the country, but similar shares of the teens in Colorado and nationwide reportedly had ever tried e-cigarettes. In high schools in Colorado, their percentage is 26.2%. Let's look at the next state, Nevada. In Nevada, in the high school, it's 15.5%. In 2017, more than 4 in 10 when they looked at their high school students had ever tried e-cigarettes or a similar device. Then when we look at Arkansas, and as I stated, I'm giving you the 10 highest states. Arkansas had one of the highest youth smoking rates in the country at 13.7 in 2017. And this year joined more than a dozen other states in raising the minimum age of tobacco purchase to 21. So as you can see, this is, as I started very early in my talk this morning, this is very, very serious because when we have states that are willing to dedicate the amount of money, $4 million, and then we're getting a breakdown of the 10 highest states, this is something that we have to certainly be proactive about. West Virginia, 
within 14.4% of high school students smoking when they looked at this of the e-cigarettes. I'll provide the rest of those numbers when we come back. It is time for a commercial break. Listeners, don't go away. We will be right back. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Listeners, we're here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is Dear to Soar, and I am Dr. R.C., your host. I want to continue on with those states and numbers. Next, there is Wyoming, and there rate for high school students was 29.6% when they looked at the e-cigarettes or another vaping device. Then there's Tennessee that came in at number four, 11.5%. Indiana, 23.9%. Kentucky came in at number two, 14.1% had the second highest youth smoking rate in the country in 2017. And while Oklahoma came in at number one and states that high schoolers were more likely to vape than to smoke traditional cigarettes in 2017, the state's teen smoking rate was 12 Point five percent behind only a handful of other states. But when they looked at the vaping, it was 16.4%. And these numbers certainly, certainly are alarming when we think about what's going on across the nation today. When we think about the e-cigarettes and vaping, And how, once again, it's packaged because it is packaged in a certain way that attracts our youth. And then when we think about peer pressure, social media, all of those things that pulls them or causes them to feel as though they have to gravitate to this without the full and complete understanding of what's truly going on and the effects that it has on them. And that is the huge part that we really need them for them to understand when it comes to this. We need for them to understand what's going on and why. Now, the next thing would be, how can an individual tell if their child or loved one is vaping? So let's look at a couple of things. Increased thirst. Vaping 
when you're looking at that, the process of vaping removes hydration from the skin of the mouth and the throat. Another thing that can be noted is the desire for flavor. Moisture is key to enjoying the flavor and the floods. When the mouth is dried out, you lose the flavor perception. Nosebleeds. Just like vaping dries out the mouth, it dries the skin of the nose as well. When the nose gets dry, it can bleed. Acne. Vaping can affect the surrounding skin. If your teen is having bad skin outbreaks and otherwise controlled skin, it may be a clue. And notice I stated it may be a clue. Cutting back on caffeine. If you're a latte loving teen is skipping the Starbucks, it could be the nicotine. Vaping plus caffeine can cause anxiety and severe mood swings. Something else, pneumonia. Research suggests that outside of the problems with nicotine exposure, there are, and the present, the e-cig vapor can cause inflammation in the lungs. So that's something to be considered as well. Finding unfamiliar USB drives, battery chargers, or spare parts can be another indication of this as well. As we look at that, and remember, I shared about the Juul, J-U-U-L. That is a part of it as, all, as well. And those are just a few indicators Telltale signs, if you will, that can be looked at. Now, some of the risks that can be or can come from vaping as well. And remember, I was saying about the inhaling and the exhaling. But when we look at the risks, additionally, let's think about how the brain function and works just for a small start. When we think about our youth and the developmental process of that, there is a part of the brain that's responsible for decision-making and impulse control. And it's not fully developed yet during adolescence. Young people are more likely to take risks with their health and safety, including the use of nicotine and other drugs. Therefore, Until about the age of 25, the brain is still growing. Until about the age of 25, the brain is still growing. Youth and young adults are also uniquely at risk for long-term, long-lasting effects, exposing their development of brains to nicotine. So when we think about that, we're, they're putting themselves at risk in that way, developmentally. Addiction, and we spoke about that a little bit previously. How does nicotine and e-cigarettes affect the brain? Until the age of 25, once again, that brain is still growing. It's still developing. There's so much information to be retained, and information is constant and consistent. Each time a new memory is created or a new skill is learned, stronger connections are built between brain cells. A young person's brain builds faster than adult brain. So we want them to have each and every opportunity possible. Some of the behavior risks that we need to be aware of. E-cigarettes for youth and young adults is strongly linked to the use of other tobacco products, such as regular cigarettes, the hookahs, and smokeless tobaccos. Evidence suggests that e-cigarette use is linked to alcohol use and other substances, such as marijuana and certain e-cigarettes. Among high school 
cigarette smokers, more than seven out of 10 also use e-cigarettes. And when we think about those numbers in itself, we have can do nothing but be conscious, be aware, acknowledge that. But I'm going to hold right here, listeners. It's time for another commercial break. I'll be right back. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. We're here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is Dare to Soar, and I am Dr. R.C., your host. Listeners, I'd also like to share with you what are some of the health risks of vaping? Now, of course, there's research and there's scientists. And as I stated, there are so many unknowns, but there are definitely so very many knowns as well. Things that researchers and scientists are finding out and have evidence-based information on. Now, while scientists are still learning about the long-term health effects of vaping, e-cigarettes vaping may contain substances that can cause serious lung disease, heart disease, and cancer, according to the American Cancer Society. Why is it so important to share this information when we speak about what is going on across the nation today? and the cases that are occurring. It is information that is vital and definitely needs to be shared. The vapor from the e-cigarettes may also contain organic compounds, flavoring chemicals. When we look at this information, and research this information. Take the time to look at what our Surgeon General is sharing about how vital it is about the organic compounds and how it may cause eye, nose, and throat irritation, as I shared a bit earlier. But I also want to take this a step further by asking you all to look at an article that was done by U.S. News. And the article was done on September the 23rd, 2019, and is entitled, He May Need a Ventilator, One Teen's Fight Against Vaping, Linked Lung Illness. And I want to say that again, he may need a ventilator, one teen's fight against vaping, linked lung illness. And it was written by the U.S. News 
September 23rd, 2019. That's just one case cited that can be looked at. And because there are so, so many more, that is how serious this is as to what is going on with our youth across the nation when it comes to vaping and the information that needs to be shared with them. As we always talk about and know, knowledge is definitely power and not power into harm, but power into express and to share and to provide understanding to individuals who just simply may not fully understand. As I stated a little while ago, you know, social media and our teens trying to fit in and find their niche in life as they go through this process, it can be very challenging at times. So anything that may come out new where they feel, when they feel pressure, peer pressure, that they have to belong and step in with a group or a particular circle, if you will, they're going to try that. And that's why it's so important that as adults, whether it's a family or a friend or someone that they trust, that we teach them about being leaders and not about being a follower and that it is okay to step outside of that circle and be different, to follow your own lead. You can set the tone for yourself, talking with them talking with them, communicating with them, start a conversation, share information with them, giving them those tips to let them know, share facts about this topic. Don't shy away from it because you never know where it's going to lead. Listeners, I have truly enjoyed having this conversation with you this morning. I truly hope that you've gotten much, much information out of it and taking notes with your notebook. I am Dr. RC on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. You have been listening to Dare to Soar. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Dare to Soar with your host, Dr. RC. Come take a ride and soar to your highest level possible each week on Dr. RC's Dare to Soar. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.